you believe that I've lived in Ohio for two years and I've never had a buckeye? Hello, I'm Angel, and this is History is Fun. I kept waiting, thinking that a professional buckeye maker would just drop buckeyes off and I could try one, but nobody has. So it's come down to me making my own buckeyes. <laughs> this native Californian is now going to try to make the Ohio dessert. <laughs> so let's get to it. Here's what you'll need. A complete list is in the description box below. Of course, you can swap out the lard for coconut oil. Here is some of the equipment, a stand mixer, a scale, a mug or a glass, whichever is easier for you, toothpicks, cooking spray, any kind will do, a measuring cup, measuring spoon, rubber spatula, and a cookie sheet covered with parchment paper. I'm going to spray the measuring cup with the cooking spray and then we're gonna measure out the peanut butter. In 1884, Marcellus Gilmore Edson of Canada patented peanut paste, the finished product from milling roasted peanuts between two heated surfaces. In 1895, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, the creator of Kellogg's cereal, patented a process for creating peanut butter with raw peanuts. He marketed it as a nutritious protein substitute for people who could hardly chew on solid food. In in 1903, Dr. Ambrose Straub of St. Louis patented a peanut butter making machine. We're going to cream the peanut butter together with the butter. This took about seven and a half minutes. Now we're going to add the vanilla to the mix and beat a little bit longer. Now add the sugar one cup at a time. Start the mixer out slow so you don't get that of sugar everywhere, then turn up the speed. Scrape down the sides of the bowl and add the second cup of sugar. Scrape down the bowl again and mix for a minute or so longer. I'm not satisfied. I think the peanut butter mix should be stiffer. I'll add some more sugar in and just mix it by hand. I've added about half a cup of sugar in and I'm happy with this consistency. Now I'm going to weigh out my mix into serving sizes, about 0.7 ounces or 20 grams. Now I'm going to roll them into something more ball shaped. I stopped and washed my hands after about every seven or eight. I'm hoping this will keep the balls smooth. I'll pop these in the refrigerator for about an hour or so. Add the lard to the chocolate and melt until shiny smooth. The Buckeyes we are making today seems to have become popular in the early 70s. I found recipes in newspapers, but they likely came from an earlier recipe. Maybe home confectioners were looking to make a Reese's peanut butter dupe? The famously tempting candy hit the market in 1928. Peanut butter fudge had already been popular, so rolling it up and dipping it into chocolate seems like a way to dress up the classic favorite. As we learned in my other video on Buckeyes, the Ohio Buckeye tree became the Ohio State tree in 1952. I found one page that said Buckeyes, as we make them today, were invented in 1964 by Anita Gale Tavel Lucas, who was trying to make peanut butter balls until she realized not covering it fully left it looking like the nut. We may never know, but it is a delicious mystery. Now we'll dip the peanut butter balls. This is far more difficult than I thought it would be. I think the peanut butter is too soft. Freezing them for a few minutes might be a good option or maybe having the peanut butter be stiffer. But I'm just gonna push through to the end. Reheat the chocolate as needed to keep it shiny and smooth. I'll try to close up these little holes with a knife. Look, Buckeyes. And I have it on good authority that they taste like they were made by a native Ohioan. 
If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. That tells the YouTube algorithm to push it out to people looking for similar content. And here are two other videos I think you will enjoy. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.